Hello, science students. This is group number one. Group number one is William, David, Nathan, and Josias. Okay, this is, we are doing science, the world of animals, and you guys are in this book right here. Uh, you are, we are on chapter two this week. Okay, so I am going to read from chapter two. This is what it looks like. There are no page numbers on here. Learning about animals. And as I read, I want you to point to the word that I'm reading. Okay, we're going to read together. And let me see. Okay, so some people study animals. Let me see if you plants and other parts of nature for their job. These people are called scientists. See that word there? Scientists. So what does scientists mean again? Scientists are people who study animals, plants, and other parts of nature for their job. This is their job. They study these things. They are called scientists. So take your pencil and trace those words and say it as you're tracing it. So when you trace the S, you say scientists, scientists, okay? I'll give you a few seconds to write the word scientist. See that little boy there? He's pretending to be a scientist. He's got a microscope in front of him and a microscope helps, helps you see things that are so small that you can't see it with your eye. So you have to look through a lens that makes something very small look bigger. And so they're able to study little tiny little things that we can't see. An example would be the germs on your hands. Okay, germs on your hands, you can't see them, but they're there. That's why we wash our hands, to get rid of the germs off our hands. There are germs on top of everything. There are germs on your phone, on your desk, on your pencil. You don't want to put your pencil in your mouth, okay? You're just swallowing a bunch of germs, okay? That's why we wash our hands every day, you wash your hands, okay? Viruses, I think we've heard that word a lot this year. Viruses, we can't see them with our eyes, but you can see them with a microscope, all right? So after you finish reading scientists, let's, fin let's continue reading. It says, you should know how to say that word now because you just traced it. What does it say? Scientists, they share what they learn with other people. Most of what we know about animals was discovered by scientists. Scientists group animals by things they have in common. So what scientists do is they take all the animals and they put them into groups, okay? Like for example, they put all the animals that have fur into one group, all the animals that live in the water into another group, all the animals that can fly into another group. They put them into groups. So it'll be easier to study them. They study one type of one group at a time. In this book, we're going to be learning about some of these groups like mammals, amphibians, reptiles, birds, fish, and more. Those are different groups. So if you take your pencil, I want you to circle mammals, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and fish. Let me see if you can see that. Down here on the bottom, right here. There should, you should have circled five things because there's five groups of vertebrates. These are animals that have a backbone, okay? What are some of the things that animals have in common? You guys know what some of the things that animals have in common, okay? Almost all animals eat either plants or anim another animal, another kind of animal. Not, themselves, not the same kind, but different one. How are animals different from one another? How can animals be different from one another? Well, some animals have a backbone and some don't. Some animals live in water, some live on land. That's how they can be different. So scientists will study what things are the same in the animals and what things are different in the animals, and they put them into groups. Okay, so now I want you to go to your next page. Okay, and we're going to read. Mice and horses may seem very different to you. One is small and one is big. 
but they both have eyes and ears and mouth. See how they're the same? A mouse and a horse, they both have ears, they both have mouths, and they both have eyes, but they're not the same animal. They both have hair, and they both have tails. They are many things, there are many things that animals have in common. Things in common means things that are the same, okay? So, down here, right here, it says same or different. So this is what your homework is going to be. You're going to get a blue color pencil, and I want you to circle around the animals that have fur. So find the animals that have fur, and I want you to circle them with a blue color pencil, okay? Don't, don't push down too hard, because if you make a mistake, you want to be able to erase it. If you push down really hard, you're not going to be able to erase your mistake, okay? Okay, after you're finished with that, we will do the next assignment on, uh, let me see, on Wednesday, okay? We're going to read a little bit more, and I'm going to tell you what else to draw on your picture. You also have a coloring page of some animals. I don't want you to do that today or tomorrow. That assignment is for Thursday. I did not give you instructions because I want you to wait for the video. You can start to color it if you want, but I don't want you to do anything else with it. Just color it. I want you to color it with your best coloring practice that you have. Stay inside the lines. Only use colors that you see in nature. For example, we don't see blue trees. So you're not going to color your, your tree blue. It's going to be a brown trunk with green leaves. Um, I can't remember what animals are on there, but animals usually are browns and grays and um, I don't remember what a whites may be black. Um, stay true to the colors the way God made our creation, okay? Um, uh, we'll stop right there. Draw your animals that have fur with a blue circle, okay? And we'll, I'll put out another video tomorrow for further instructions, all right? Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.